Sometimes the things I find in thrift stores absolutely baffle me. I'm Michelle. This is my romantic tangle. And I would love to know how you think this got here because it's a stick. At my house, that would have been in the woodpile. I have been tempted in the past to ask the neighbor if he would trade a really interesting hollow bit of log from his woodpile for stuff from my woodpile because it looked like it would make a great little fairy house, but I decided not to. I don't think that came from a craft store. I'm entertained by it. I think that is supposed to be a hedgehog. Maybe. And look at this. I have found toll painted frying pans before. This is, I believe, the first of the non-stick toll painted frying pans I've ever found. But the landscape on the back is super cute. And if I did not firmly believe that someday I'm going to learn to paint scenes like that and paint my own on something I find for an from an estate sale, I would have brought that home. There's no reason I couldn't have brought it home and hung it in my kitchen until I find the time, inspiration, and skill. Wish I would have thought of that in the store. Here is someone's collection of geese. Maybe the geese will wear me down someday, but at, we're still at the point of time where I cannot summon up any nostalgia for the geese. I had an appointment in town and I had just enough time to detour over to Teen Challenge. It's not quite on my usual route, but they have fun stuff. Look at this clown. I don't know what position he is supposed to be in or what he's supposed to be doing. And I'm not afraid of clowns, but he's creepy. I was looking down this aisle for milk glass and then fairly quickly remembered that they keep their milk glass on its own shelf a couple of aisles over. They have rearranged things in this store and I am a creature of habit. It will be three years from now and I will still be looking for things where they used to be because like I said, I'm a creature of habit and I also don't get out enough these days that I can remember where things are now versus where they used to be. Old habits die hard. The milk glass is down this aisle. And for whatever reason, this store always seems to have a lot of it. I've seen two or three times this much on these shelves. I kind of like those big bowls. I thought the bowl in the front was dirty. Maybe that's a sign I go to too many barn sales, but that is actually really, really faded gold leaf. Those big bowls fascinated me, but I wasn't feeling like I wanted to reach back and move everything around to get a closer look at one. I'm not sure about these. I'm not sure if those were milk glass. They felt just a little bit different. And like I've said before, I am no expert in what is and is not milk glass. If it looks like it would have been in grandma's collection, it is close enough to milk glass to pass my test. And it's only once in a blue moon that I fall in love with a piece enough to bring it home with me. I have always wanted a baby buggy, either a full size one or a doll one. One of these days I'm going to bring one home. This is not the one. Although it is cute as a button, I don't know why I am so fascinated with these. I never had one as a kid, but something about them just makes my heart sing. Ooh, we've got antiques. I am not sure if this little French provincial dresser is new or old. In my own home, I've got some pieces from the 80s from when I was 10-year-old me and some pieces from the 40s or 50s that were grandma's. If I had moved the camera at just the right angle, we could have looked at the label and figured out if it was old or new. I mean, to me, they all look kind of the same anyway. For the longest time, the only way I could tell the difference between grandma's and mine was to look in the drawers at the dovetailing because I could not remember which was which. 
This piece is pretty. It's shabby, it's banged up, but sometimes I almost love the battered old antiques more than I love the new stuff. I'm a little less afraid of it. Here's a pretty headboard and a more institutional bed if your aesthetics fits that. Here's a whole stack of headboards. I don't know why this location and the other Teen Challenge locations we visit, they seem to attract antiques and sometimes older than expected antiques. Ooh, I see the back of something there. If we can angle around to get to it, eh, it's cute. I don't mind it. The piece next to it is absolutely gorgeous. And I have a hunch that this is old fashioned in style, but more modern. And I also totally don't care because if I was buying furniture, I would buy what I liked, not what I thought was or was not antique. This thing was pretty. And I've got to remember to take notes of the prices if I want to talk about it because the camera never picks them up. If the boys had been with me, this would have been finding its way into the car. It is gorgeous. Absolutely old, absolutely has a story behind it, although you would never know what that story was. I really like that one. Didn't get a picture of the price tag, but I'm sure knowing this place, it would have been affordable. Mary Maxim caught my eye in the craft section. It's just instructions for, I don't remember what, nothing fun, but somehow that's been added to my mental list of crafting logos that I look for. I had fun wandering around. I didn't buy anything. I maybe should have bought the frying pan, but that's okay. Let me know if anything caught your eye and thanks for watching. I'm Michelle. This is my romantic tangle.